Okay, so my name is uh, Akia Mahdi. I'm a third year computer science and pure math major, well, math major at the University of Kwazulu Natal in South Africa. Yes, BSc, I think specifically it's the M stream, yeah. uh, which is the mathematics stream. So, yeah, within the M stream, there's a whole bunch of things you can do within the M stream. It's like a branch and different things for under M stream. As far as I'm aware, if you are part of M stream, you can major in things such as computer science. Applied maths, maths, and like astro astronomy. So the two types of math specifically at UK is that we have what is called math, and it's more to do with like pure mathematics. And we have applied math, which is called applied math. I studied uh, IT, physics, history, and then I had to take math, obviously, English, Afrikaans, life orientation. My matric results are actually pretty bad. So really? when I finished matric, yeah, so I finished my trick and I did pretty bad in my trick. So I actually had to rewrite uh, my my matric. And then on the last day of registration, on, well, not the last, I think it was one of the last of registration, someone phoned my mom and, and she was like, uh, if your son comes in today by five o'clock, then he can be registered to study computer science that you get then. So that was a bit hectic because I was like at home at the time at like 10 and then we got the call. So then I rushed to your kids then. And I actually got accepted into computer science. And then that's basically how I started studying computer science. And then after the first year, I switched to, so I was originally on the BSc IT stream. Then I switched to the BSc M stream. And then I majored in computer science and math. Whereas previously, my were going to be double computer science. That was a lot of factors. I think the most important factor for me was I enjoy creative endeavors. So I enjoy like writing and film. So I wanted to do something about that had like some creativity in it. So if you, if you know computer science, if you know programming, there's a lot of problem solving, creative problem solving that comes into it. And I also enjoy like the design of things, of yeah. buildings, of systems. So that too played an important part and you obviously have to design things in computer science then. Uh, yeah, so it was problem solving, designing, and obviously working with others because most computer scientists, most programmers work within a team or part of a team to solve problems, massive problems for companies and for users and all that kind of thing. So the fact that I was a bit more sociable, the fact that I enjoyed design and problem solving all contributed to me choosing computer science. And also I, I like the versatility of the degree because with computer science, you can build and design anything you can imagine almost. Um, and it's not going to be very difficult to build. I think if you're like maybe an architect, you need lots of raw materials, or if you, uh, you know, like, something else, you're gonna need a lot of things, but with computer science, just need your laptop and figuring things out and you can build whatever you can imagine. So that's kind of why I chose computer science. So typically within South Africa, there's a lot of math and physics uh, majors tend to work within banks um, because they recognize that people who major in those things have problem solving ability and then they do a lot of on the job training. But there's a bunch of other things you can do, like you can, uh, I think NetBank has a quant program that if you major in maths, applied maths, or pure science, you can enter. Um, there's also an intersection of computer science and math. It's, I forget the name, but it's with designing algorithms. So if you major in both those things, you can do that. Um, and then obviously there's like teacher lecture, those kind of things. So I wouldn't say that it's not, it's not as lucrative as computer science in terms of the things you can do. Uh, but it's not like you, you won't be able to do anything with, with the math degree. For me, I think I, I chose math more because I really just enjoy problem solving uh, a lot. I really, when I came to university, when I started problems in math, I was like, this is really challenging. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm just going to keep going with this. And I managed to make it all the way so far to this year. Um, I don't think I, if I do get a chance to do honors, I don't think I would do an honors in maths because... Uh, I do enjoy computer science a bit more because there's a lot more design involved, but I definitely enjoyed maths a lot throughout my uh, university degree. There's a few set core modules you have to take, then you can choose electives, and then you also have a research project. So like a proposal almost that you have to do, it's, it's, it takes up the whole year, and at the end you have to hand that in. Honors will be uh, both in comp and math, or can you pick one? Can you, you have to mind? pick one. Okay. Uh, with, with computer science, the nice thing is, so you, you have to take seven, seven computer science modules and then you need two other modules 
from within the school of math, staff, and economics. I mean, and computer science. So I could choose two math modules if I'd like to, but uh, I think one thing that I realized with computer science and, and doing math is that it's just, it's too much work to try and balance both computer science and math, especially if you're busy doing other things. Like for me, uh, I spend a lot of time doing activism work. So I find that it's very difficult to balance all three. So I'd rather just stick with one discipline and definitely the discipline I enjoy more is computer science. So I think the, the best way to study for math is to do past papers or to do tests or to do, uh, you know, your, your, your tutorial. So um, the, the best proven method to study is, is active recall, but with math, it's a bit more different where you don't, you aren't really recalling things, you're more trying to apply it. And when you do lots of variations of different problems, you learn how to apply theorems better and you learn how to solve things. But I think that applies more once you get into second year and third year math. And first year math, I think there is definitely a bit more of uh, things follow a more similar path. But I would say in third year, it was definitely like you have to pick and choose which theorem to apply and how will that theorem help you prove something. You know, it was more, uh, you know, there wasn't like a set way of doing things. So I wouldn't say that I'm amazing at uh, uh, anything. I think that almost everything I do is the result of a lot, and I mean a lot of hard work. I think, um, you know, with both computer science and math, there's definitely a lot of hard work you have to put in, not necessarily um, just like learning things over and over, but like to understand, to truly understand things, you have to really understand things. So that can take up quite some time because sometimes you're looking at a problem or theorem or someone's explaining something, you don't get it, then you've got to like try and find something on the internet. You don't find internet, you've got to like go away, come back, see if you get it this time, then try the next day. So sometimes you do get uh, stuck with, with math problems, especially, uh, you know, sometimes the answers don't jump out at you. But uh, I would definitely say that, yeah, it's, it's mostly hard work. Okay, so I would say that for computer science, the best online resources I find are like websites, like Tutorials Point, Geeks for Geeks. Uh, for maths, so there's actually an amazing uh, professor, Professor Leonard, and he teaches Calculus 1, 2, and 3, which basically covers most of the, f the first year and second year math. So his playlist is like, his playlist on differential calculus, Calculus 1, 2, and 3, is basically everything you will do in the first two years of math in terms of the core modules. And he explains things in ways that are very easy to understand. Yeah, there's a lot of great resources out there. I think the lectures are also pretty great. Uh, the tutors have also been really good. Um, and I definitely think, yeah, your friends as well. You know, because sometimes it's just easier to speak to your friend about, about uh, understanding a problem because they're often more all the time with you. So for me, I used to study i say consistently throughout the day. So obviously you have tutorials, but sometimes, you know, you forget a question that you were stuck on when you go to the tutorial. But your friend is right there, you can ask them like, okay, do you understand this? So yeah, I definitely say your friends as well, are a great resource. Yes, so from, I think Math 212, Math 130, Math 140. I can't remember for Math 251, but we had an SI leader by the name of Brandon and he was really, really helpful. Um, in terms of explanation and, and like always helping us. So he was always active on the WhatsApp groups, which is great because, you know, like I said earlier, having easy access to someone who knows the work or someone who talked to the book about was uh, really, really helpful. So yeah, he was great in terms of math tutorials. And then there also the math tutorial teachers were, were also quite helpful, but yeah, SI was good with Brandon. Um, I didn't really attend too many computer science SIs in second year. I attended a lot in first year just to see how it was. And I, I think it was also pretty good in first year. So in first year semester one, I did Math 130, Stats Comp 100, and Econ 101. So, and then I followed that in second semester with Comp 102, which is the follow-up to Comp 100, Math 140, which is the follow-up to Math 130, Comp 107, which is my elective, and then Econ 102, which was my follow-up for economics second year. Of those modules, I definitely enjoyed maybe Comp 100 the most because it's a lot of problem solving and also Math 140 was also really cool in terms of the amount of problem solving that you have to do. Um, 
I'd say that econ was very interesting. So when I, I took econ as an elective, but I actually enjoyed it so much that I decided to carry it on into second year. I mean, sorry, into second semester because I have economics in general to be very interested. And it does have a lot of roots in maths, a lot of what economists figure out and the theories that they apply come from maths. So yeah, I, I enjoyed learning about how the economy works. I remember in one of my economics lectures, something that struck me was the diamond and water problem that one of my lectures was talking to me about. And it's basically the idea, uh, diamonds are so expensive, but they're not really useful, whereas water is not expensive at all, but it's way more useful. So it, it's a very interesting paradox that made me think a lot. I think with Comp 100, it was Python, but the focus was on problem solving. Math and study was the introduction of math. It was a lot of what you did in grade 12 and mainly focused on derivatives and the introduction of calculus. Uh, that 130 was a little bit of what you did in grade 12, but at a, a more advanced level, I would say, and a little bit of new things. And then I didn't do econ in high school, so I have nothing to compare to. Um, Comp 102 was Java, but it was it focused more on the language of Java than problem solving, although we did learn a lot of problem solving, it's like recursion, which was an interesting thing I found. Um, and then Math 140 was definitely a follow on more from Math 130 than from like high school and really introduced me to like what people would refer to as like proper calculus. Comp 107, we did things like regular expressions and uh, logic. Yeah, you also did Comp 107. So, how did you yeah. find Comp 107? I liked it. Comp 107 was my favorite comp. I love the logic section. <laughs> I really like Yeah, comp. and I think it's applicable to what we're doing now in this in this semester, Comp uh, 314. I think in terms of career opportunities and employability, I, I would definitely suggest stats. So UKZN is one of the few universities that um, you know offers like a data science degree. So that's basically a major into statistics and uh, computer science. And I think it's always great to have like a big understanding of statistics because even now in, in COM301, one of our projects involves a lot of understanding of data analytics and that kind of thing. So you will need that, especially if you become a programmer. I took econ because I was just generally interested in economics, um, but there's a whole lot of electives that people can choose. I know people who majored in chemistry, physics first year. Um, so you can choose what you want, but I think that you know, it really depends on what you're looking for, what you enjoy, and uh, what you want to be as, as a programmer. So in second year, I took Math 212, Math 236, uh, Comp 200, IS 10 211. In second semester, I took Math 251, uh, Comp 204, Comp 201. So you have to take Zulu at uh, UKZN, and I think that's great. Um, I enjoyed learning in Zulu, you know, obviously I enjoy learning languages in general, so that was cool. So you have to take COM200, COM201 as, as uh, for your computer science major, and for the math major, you have to take math 2 and 2 and math 251. So third year, first semester, I took math 210, uh, math 356. So if you major in math, you have to take math 210, math 356 in uh, first semester, and you have to take math 314 second semester and one more math elective. So, and then I took COM306, which is databases, COM315, which was about C++ programming. Um, and then I did COM14 this semester and COM301 this semester. So you have to take COM315 and COM314 and two other computer science electives in third year. I try and, I try and achieve like a, an even balance, but I definitely think that I spend more time on math but I would say that for computer science, it also depends on, on what the module contains. So for uh, COM 306, I had a project to do and COM 315 had a project to do, and those definitely took a lot of time. So I'd say it's pretty even. I think that the best advice in you, any student who wants to major in, in math and comp is you have to actually really be interested in hard work and problem solving because you're going to be basically doing that your entire degree. And I think also don't be disparaged by failure, you know? Uh, so you won't always understand everything the first time, but if you don't understand everything the first time, it's okay, just, just try again, try something different. I think, I think a lot of the, the problems that I've seen with my other students is like, 
they'll get stuck on something and then they, they might give up or they'll be like, you know what, I won't study this for the test. But I don't think that way to go. I think that just give it another day, try it another day, try a different lecturer, try a different online resource. You're going to face a lot of challenges as a computer science and, and math student because the degree is, is not easy. Computer science is really not difficult. It's not a very easy major. And then if you add math on top of that, it's really not an easy degree. But I was really disoriented in first year because like I never went to orientation day or I didn't really have anyone to guide me like what was going on because I registered like literally, I think like a few days before the registration was closing. So I just kind of had to figure everything out for myself. But the nice thing was there were a lot of people like, I just stopped random people on campus and like, do you know where this block is? Do you know where this lecture hall is? Do you know what, what this stands for? And uh, yeah, it was, it was really helpful because they helped me out. For me, I think that in the beginning, I was very concerned with just passing. But then once I exceeded that, I kept going for continuity to improve on what I did. Um, and as I improved each time, um, it seemed to work out. So every single time I'm trying to set goals that are realistic, but that are slightly above what I've done before. But I wouldn't say that they were uh, fixed because uh, each course throws its own curveballs at you, has its own requirements, has its own set of challenges. Um, I think the, the general goal that I've always said is that I'm going to give it my best and that's all I can do. I would say interact with peers because you see, when I came to UKZN, I had spent, you know, I, I was out of school for a while. So, um, and, and I'm not from KZN, I'm from the Eastern Cape. So I learned a lot about students and uh, as I became class rep for many of my modules, um, I learned to interact with students more and I learned more about like what, what bothers them, what challenges they're facing. And that led me to, to activism and, and wanting to continuously help people because I realized how much, how difficult this degree is. And if I understood something, I just wanted to like try and help other people understand things. In second year and first year, there were a few of my friends or a few people I knew, like they used to message me for help. And like, I used to respond immediately. And actually that, that's how I met my girlfriend because she was struggling with computer science comp 100. And she was like struggling, she just like messaged me randomly. And I just responded very quickly and she's like, wow, this guy helped me. And then there was another girl that was struggling with computer science. And I used to like spend my, so you know, you have lectures until 10 plus two. Sometimes you have practicals. When I was free, I used to spend like until five at campus, like trying to help her. And then there was another guy, uh, we became good friends. So we do math, we, he does math and stats, I do math and comp, but he used to do comp second, first year. And he used to help me and I used to help him. So just like build that camaraderie and that wanting and willingness to help people because you can't do this um, truly by yourself. So it's just, yeah, that's, that's where I would say interact with the fellow students, get to know them, help them as much as you can and let them help you as much as they can. I'm always willing to help anyone. If I can help in any way, I will drop whatever I'm doing to help people because I, I think, you know, also it has one additional benefit that you learn a lot. Um, so I've learned a lot from helping other students and interacting with other students. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, interviewed me and I'm sure that this will turn out to be great. I, I've been class rep, I think now for eight or nine modules, it's been eight modules. So there's 24 modules in my entire degree and I've been in class rep for about a third of them. Yep. And for me, that is the most natural part. Um, you know, because that is what I really wanted more than doing well at university. It was to help students and to fight for students. And so for me, that wasn't really work. I'd say that was like just something that I want to do innately uh, to be there for the fellow students. And, and yeah, and I think in terms of time management, um, I, what I've done is I've set up like specific times that I'll interact with the like WhatsApp groups where the students are or like my emails. So like, I set a specific time and then at that time I will check my messages and generally I said in such a way that like I know when people are most active I find that most students are active in the whatsapp groups like towards the evening or like in the afternoon especially like if you're writing a test the next day they'll be very active like in the evening or in the afternoon if you like ever need advice on anything like to ever see this video like I'm sure you can just find me on LinkedIn or something. You can just message me and I'll be glad to speak to whoever needs advice on 
first year, second year competent math and DPS. And if I can help in any way, I'd love to help. But yeah, thank you for having me on.